I'm Laura Ingram, and this is the Ingram Angle from Washington tonight. Americans recoil as Dems sell perversion. That's the focus of tonight's angle. It, trans youth are, are vulnerable. We really want to to to, to base our treatment and and, uh, and to uh, affirm and to uh, support and empower these youth, not to limit their participation in activities and sports, and even uh, uh, limit their ability to get gender affirmation treatment in their state. No, it's not Halloween. It's the Biden administration's version of normal. As inflation continues to tear through household budgets and weaken America, they trot out Rachel Levine from HHS to promote dangerous hormone blockers and life-altering trans surgery for minors. This is sick. Adults preying on our children under the guise of providing health care, claiming that anyone who criticizes their tactics and their goals is bigoted or intolerant. And their twisted forces that are backing them yeah, they're well-funded, and they're fanning out across America. In New York, the home of sexual deviance, Drag Story Hour, DSH NYC, it's a taxpayer-funded nonprofit, puts on shows for children as young as three. And one of its more prominent performers has social media accounts filled with nudity and other sexually explicit content. Oliver Herface, who also goes by Angel Isaguer, is one of the talents listed on the DSH website. The organization's sanitized bio of her face describes him as a drag king and a former daycare teacher who has a passion for working with children, especially what it means to be queer and trans, the education of that. But one video posted on his social media profile shows her face pretending to stab his breasts while wearing a chest binder. Okay, but don't worry. He warns his followers to not bind longer than six to eight hours and urges them to be safe. Of course, lefty lawmakers, they defend this garbage, claiming that this drag queen group, DSH, is an opportunity for children as young as three to engage in play of gender fluidity in childhood and also helps them learn about love in a safe space. And just down I-95 in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, a Pride event last week included drag queens encouraging kids to pole dance, even allowing them to take a twirl. Here's the woman behind posting and defending it. Pole fitness is appropriate for all ages. Could you imagine asking a social worker if it was appropriate for a child to do pole fitness when every playground in this country has a fireman's pole on it, you'd probably get laughed at. Yeah. While most were rightly horrified by this, not Pennsylvania's Democrat governor, Tom Wolf. In fact, he sent a letter that said how honored he was to support the event. Remember, he's the one who gave us Rachel Levine. And across the country in Washington state, we found perhaps the most maddening story of the week. An 80-year-old grandmother was banned there from her YMCA after demanding that a biological male leave the woman's locker room where little girls were undressing. Addressing the Port Townsend City Council last Monday, here's how Julie Jamin, who's the band senior citizen, described what happened. In an effort by the city and the YMCA to apply the neocultural gender rules at Mountain View Pool dressing shower room facilities, women and children are being put at risk my experience while showering after my swim was hearing a man's voice in the women's dressing area and seeing a man in a women's swimsuit watching little girls pull down their bathing suits in order to use the toilets in the dressing room. I reacted by telling him to leave. And the consequence is that I have been banned from the pool. The Y has not provided any dressing shower room options for women who do not want to be exposed to men who identify as women. It is unconscionable that the YMCA would instigate these new policies without clearly informing pool patrons and parents. Okay, first of all, that granny rocks. But when pressed, Port Townsend, Washington police said that Mr. J Mrs. Jamin had an emotional response to a strange male being in the bathroom and helping a young girl take off her bathing suit. Well, I should hope the response to that would be emotional. 
So, so much for liberals, by the way, wanting women's feelings, like Mrs. Jamin's feelings, respected. I, only, I guess only certain type of women, well, certain liberal women, they get respect. And once again, the left is encouraging this insanity. Biden's expansion of the categories of people protected under Title IX requires now that men who identify as women be allowed full access to the women and girls' restrooms and locker rooms, including you know, locker rooms of K-12 facilities and other higher ed facilities. So what does that mean for the 80-year-old grandmother you just saw, who was obviously, in good faith, acting in the best interest of that little girl? Well, at best, she's going to be persona non grata among the elites. At worst, she'd probably be sued civilly and could even be subject to a federal civil rights investigation. I don't put anything past Merrick Garland these days. But looking at all this, what's amazing, though, is that Democrats actually think this plays beyond the coast, that this helps them electorally just because, I don't know, their leaders are happy to promote this freakish, dangerous behavior. It certainly doesn't mean the rest of the voters are. And smart governors like Ron DeSantis in Florida, they're fighting back at every turn for our kids their innocence, and the traditions that made America great. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.